And people are coming, not to witness the familiar disasters of Bangladesh, but to examine one man's solution to its hopelessness, a bank. A bank that believes that credit is a fundamental human right and thus lends money only to the poorest of the poor. Not aid, but credit. A few dollars to buy a tool for husking rice, or a calf, or a sewing machine. Assets that can, as hard as it may be to imagine it, change people's lives. So far, the barefoot borrowers have taken more than $100 million in loans, and virtually every cent of it has been paid back. Mohammed Yunus is the director of the Grameen, or Rural Bank. Average loan is? $67 right now. Yeah. It's very small, uh, but this is the kind of money people need to do things for themselves. Even then, that money is not available to them. And that, is, I think, is the basic cause of poverty, because people do not have access to resources. Yunus first approached ordinary commercial banks, but they laughed at the idea of lending poor people money. So with a few small grants and loans from international donors, Yunus started the bank. In the upside-down world of Grameen banking, poverty is the only thing that qualifies a borrower, and the bank comes to the customer, not the other way around. This woman is one of 8,000 roving bankers. She's on her way to collect weekly payments. The borrowers gather at the bank center. Each of the five-man rows represents a bank group. Each member is responsible for not only his installment, but for every debt owed by the group. The meeting ends with a compulsory exercise session, then the official Grameen Bank salute, and off the banker goes for another collection. In order to establish the bank, Dr. Yunus says he had to unlearn all the theories of economic development he learned in the United States and was passing on to his students at Chittagong University. I came here in 1972 with uh, all the arrogance of a new PhD from a new American university. I thought I knew all the answers. And while I was doing that, I see things are not happening the way uh, my textbook says economic situation in the country is going down and down and down. So I got very frustrated and I started walking in the villages to find out what is their economics, what do they say. So that village became university for me to learn economics from them. One of the first people he met was Sophia Khartoum, maker of stools. Ultimately, she became the first Grameen borrower but first she taught him some economics. Because she had no capital, she was forced to borrow from a local trader to buy raw materials. She then sold them back to him at a price he set. Her profit, two cents a day. Two cents a day. That's what, that's what I could not accept, why anybody should make only two cents for such a beautiful skill. So uh, I said, uh, if somebody had uh, given her the money, if she didn't have to borrow from the trader, could she sell elsewhere and get more money? She said, yes, I can. In order to become self-sufficient in the stool business, Sophia Khartoum needed working capital of six dollars. Eunice lent her the money, not a gift, a loan. Her profit soared from two cents a day to a dollar twenty-five a day. It boggles your mind to see the difference that you can bring to people's life just by one small step. And it's unbelievable that people can do things for themselves. What was your theory as an economist when you were up on the hill teaching, your theory about poverty? Why did you think people were poor? They are lazy. They don't want to work hard too hard. That's why they are poor. And you come here, you see the entirely different world. People are working like anything. I mean, working very hard to make that two penny a day. They have beautiful skills. They want to change their life. They're desperate to change their life. Sophia Khartoum's income is three times the national average of $140 a year. She's been able to build a solid new house with a tin roof, a giant step up in the nightmarish poverty of Bangladesh. What's more, she says she's now able to feed her family. Does she consider herself now a rich woman? Uh, see, she, she wouldn't say that. It's not rich. She said, I'm not that rich. I was too poor at that time 
Now, now I can live with mm. myself. Mm. I can take care of myself. That's the difference.